Amen. Good morning, St. Andrews. Uh, welcome to worship, whether you are here, at, I, I love Pete's phrase, uh, whether you are here at our world headquarters based in Tucson, Arizona, uh, or you are joining us online, uh, welcome. It is great to, to be uh, together, whether it is just uh, physically or just um, through the Holy Spirit, but we are gathered together to worship our risen Savior this morning. Amen? Amen. Um, uh, again, if you um, are new, uh, welcome. I'm so glad that you were here. My name is Matt. I'm one of the pastors. I would love uh, to get a chance to get to know you and, if, and connect. Uh, one of the ways that you can connect is through our, um, our QR code. So if you were given a bulletin on the way in, you have it on the back. Or if you are in line, you have this. One, yes, I am Vanna White. Um, you have this lovely QR code that you can scan, um, and it gives you ways to connect, uh, ways that we can be praying for you, ways that you can give. Um, so thankful for those sort of things. Um, one of the things that's going on in the life of our church is that this Friday, we have an opportunity to get a chance to serve um, the teachers and students at Butterfield uh, Elementary School. Uh, it is their last day of Sunday school. Sunday school. This is the pastor in me talking. Uh, summer school. And so you can go ahead and um, if you are interested in helping serve some EGs, um, they'd love to have you. You can contact Ruth Ann smith uh, She'd love to help you. Um, we have our uh, next Sunday, our Super Friends, a wonderful, wonderful ministry that we've just started um, that has been led by uh, Miss Shelly Akins and Heather Brannick, um, who are our children's ministry directors. Uh, it's a ministry for um, special needs kids uh, and, and families, and they do such an amazing job. And so this next Sunday, they're inviting folks to come to Oro Valley Aquatic Center um, and come swim and hang out. So would love to have you uh, part of that. There's still space for the J17 weekends. Uh, the men's weekend is this weekend. Women's weekend is the following weekend. And they have a phenomenal speaker one of those weekends. Her name is Pastor, well, her, na her name is Reverend Connie Randall. Um, and so we're excited that uh, Connie can do that. Um, we also have, if you notice on our, uh, on our communion table, we um, often will have a rosebud, and that uh, signifies a birth of a child in our community. And so we're celebrating um, Oliver Winslow Woodard, uh, the grandson of Karen and Doug Woodard, uh, uh, this morning. We're excited about that. Um, one other uh, great, well, actually, I have two other announcements. One is that you know and you've been praying for, and I'm so thankful, um, that we have been ha in the process of hiring a new preschool director. Uh, and I'm glad to announce that we have hired a new preschool director, and her name is Jen, Jennifer Boltman. Um, we are so beyond, yes, please, you can, we can grab... Uh, we are so thankful and excited for her and her leadership. She is wonderful and has been part of our community. She attends the nine o'clock service. Um, she is just uh, amazing and will be such a huge blessing. Uh, the one other announcement, just to make our church aware, uh, that we have been blessed um, that there have been a few people from our church that last night joined another choir, uh, and they sang at Carnegie Hall. And so it was really cool. Um, uh, ben Constantinides, uh, some woman with the last name of Grover, I don't know who she is, uh, never heard of her before. Um, actually, my lovely wife, sorry, honey. Um, uh, Liz Soflin, um, and Logan Schmidt, who's our assistant director of uh, youth ministry, all went uh, to, New York, to New York City and got a chance to sing at Carnegie Hall, representing 
all of us here at St. Andrews, and it was a blessing, and it's just the coolest thing ever. They, we don't have a recording of it, um, but we do have some pictures that hopefully we'll show um, next week. But as we begin worship, let us take a deep breath. Trusting that the Lord who gives us breath, who gives us life, is with us now and forever. Number 329, verse 1, Break Thou the Bread of Life. Amen. If you are able, would you stand and join me in this morning's call to worship? In the sanctuary, I looked upon you and saw your power and your glory. I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift my hands and call on your name. I sing for joy and cling to you, my help and my strength. Oh God, we are our God. For you, oh God. Let us worship the Lord today.
Hopefully, will you be on? It's not plugged in. What? Oh, got it. <laughs> oh, it's good to be with you this morning and see your faces and just to feel your presence. And now this is a time where together we come into a time of confession. Please join me. Merciful God, when we compare our lives to the potential we believe you have in mind for us, we realize anew that our thoughts are unfortunately not your thoughts, and our ways are sadly very different from your ways. And yet your mercy is so great that you keep giving us another chance to cultivate our identity as people shaped by your thoughts and your ways. Forgive us, O oh God, when we are tempted to shape our behavior and our lifestyles by other than the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ. Hear us now as we confess to you silently. And this is a time where we enter into a time of silent confession. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Guess what? Our Savior Jesus has heard our prayers and has forgiven us. Yay! <laughs> repeated together that is in God and Christ has heard our prayer, has heard our confession, and forgiven us our sins. Let us now each offer one another that forgiveness and peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Good morning. Today's scripture comes from 1 John chapter 3, voice, uh, verses 11 through 22. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. 
We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers. And you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart is, do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do as he pleases. For him is our greatest gift, God's grace. Mom. 
light came trickling down, and he never said a mumbling word. His blood came trickling. I don't know who's going on now. I can't. Oh. Who votes that we get to listen to that three more times instead of hearing me preach? I, oh, man. Thank you so much. Uh, what you didn't know is that uh, Mark actually stepped in for me. I was supposed to sing that. Um, but I was thought it was too much, you know, preaching afterwards. That, oh, whoa, okay. I joke because I've got to compose myself. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Mark. Um, whoa, okay, okay, I'm back. Uh, so this morning, we are going to try to get over my feelings and my emotions of that. Um, and we're going to be continuing on our sermon series based on the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, we've been calling it uh, Free to be Fruitful. This idea uh, from the Apostle Paul that he writes to the church in Galatia that uh, as we grow in the Lord as we grow in our knowledge and our love of the Lord, that God will provide fruit in us and through us for this world. That as we grow in God, we are opened up to new perspectives. That's how God has seen um, and wants us to live and how we ought to live. And we've talked a little bit about how uh, we can be like healthy plants that are supported by healthy soil that produce fruit when we live our lives planted in the truth of God, that our lives become fruit, that our lives become blessings to this world, that people will see the truth and love of God in us and through us, 
And this morning we're going to be talking about the fruit of patience. Just testing your patience right now. That's really all I'm doing. But before we get too far in, let's pray. Gracious and loving God. We are so thankful for your love and grace and mercy for us. God, that we have air in our lungs so that we can proclaim your name in word and deed. God, that we have been given your grace and love and mercy so that we can be people that sow seeds of hope to this world. So God, we thank you for your love, which is for us now and forever. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. So this morning we're going to be taking a look at this idea of patience through the lens of James chapter 5, verse 7 through 16. This is what it says. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for his precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call uh, blessed those who showed, showed endurance. You have heard of the endurance of Job. And you, have the, you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Above all, my beloved, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no so that you may not fall under condemnation. For are any of you suffering? Then you pray. Are any of you cheerful? Then sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? And you should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love this section of scripture because it could be its own 12-week sermon series. Um, I joked, though I won't say that joke again because I feel like I hurt my friend Pete's feelings. I said, I joked and I said, well, this could be a uh, 12-week sermon series or it could be a 30-minute Pete sermon um, with all of the things. But this has this stuff about uh, talking about patience, talking about suffering, talking about praying in hard times, the Lord having uh, faith saving the sick, God forgiving sins. Just one section of scripture has so much theology. But today we're just going to be talking about God's righteousness and power in patience. And I have, to be, uh, I have to be honest with you, uh, every time I hear the word patience, a song pops in my head. Uh, some of you know this about me, is that often things trigger songs in my head, and I always have a song stuck in my head. But there was this moment, as some of you know, that um, as I grew up here at St. Andrews, that we used to do this part of the deacon's barbecue was also a talent show. And you'd have people tap dancing, you'd have people singing and doing all sorts of amazing things. But there was once, one act that I remember in my heart forever. 
Uh, and so you, some of you might remember this one act um, and this one time, and you might be able to tell me who this woman was. But there was a woman that used to come um, and do these things, and she would dress up like a clown. And um, she had this act, and she walked in. She actually ran in, and I was doing sound for her. Um, actually, you know what? I, I was told her name last service. Uh, her name was Betty Kreider. And she would, she would often uh, dress as a clown and do fun, silly things in front of the church. But she, this one time, she ran in as it sounded like a broken glass. And she began to sing. She sang, have patience, have patience, don't be in such a hurry. Anybody know this? Anybody remember, anybody remember this? I, like, in all of my, like, everything of, like, you know, those, there's moments that are so transformative of life. I have no idea why this one is that. But she performed this song from the music machine and performed it as Herbert the Snail was the character. Right? And her, the song goes like this again. Have patience, have patience. Don't be in such a hurry. Because when you get impatient, you only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. And I love this, and I have no idea. But anytime anybody says the word patience, this song pops into my head. That performance that Betty gave uh, pops into my head. And I love this because we so take patience for granted. We think of it as weakness sometimes. But the Greek, and I would give you the actual Greek name, and I asked our contemporary worship director, Ben Constantinides, what it sounds like in Greek. Because I can read it, fine. Speak it is another thing. And he sh told me last night, and I, I don't think I can repeat it, um, in fear that I'm going to say something totally different. But this idea of patience is beyond patience. It's endurance. It's constancy. It's steadfastness. It's perseverance. Or as the early church father, um, St. Augustine, says, patience is the companion of wisdom. The two cannot be more intertwined. See, patience is the ability to take trouble from uh, others or life without blowing up. It's trusting that God is with us and that with his help we will get through it. As one scholar said, patience is to suffer joyfully. See, patience is to endure discomfort. It's to endure discomfort without complaint. When we think about all of the fruits of the Spirit, it takes the fruits of the Spirit to have patience. Because it calls up things like self-control, humility, and generosity. It's a realization that the world is not about us. Right? We live in a world that is so self-focused, that uh, it is so self-focused that we think the, the, the world is about us. But having patience is trusting that we are not at the center, that God is. That God is the one that is in control. I love uh, watching Jesus in his interactions uh, with his uh, disciples. And you know, we have talked before that I would love to know about the in-between times, right? We know about the interactions that Jesus had with his disciples. I'd love to know what the conversations were as they were walking down the street, as they were moving from the uh, uh, Sea of Galilee to Jerusalem, as they were walking. Down. I would have loved 
to, to know what their actual interactions were like. But Jesus was so very, very patient with his disciples. Often as we read, uh, I, I believe that we can describe his disciples as sometimes thick-headed. I've never been like that. Sometimes they were lazy. Sometimes they were selfish and slow to believe that God, that Jesus, was exactly who he said he was. See, even uh, from like a merely uh, human standpoint, we could see how frustrating that is. But Jesus had patience. See, I imagine even more so if, if you were God incarnate, the one telling these people, this is who I am, this is what I'm doing, I am going to show you. I'm not only going to tell you that I am God, I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn water into wine. I'm going to walk on water. I'm going to heal the sick. I'm going to raise somebody from the dead. And they still just don't get it. See, in spite of Jesus' miracles and words of wisdom, they were, in, they were uh, focused on themselves and their beliefs wavered because they were still thinking about the me-centric world. I love that from time to time Jesus would remark that his disciples were slow to believe. Right, we have, we have things like as uh, Peter walks out onto the water, why do you doubt me? But Jesus still loved. Jesus still had hope for his disciples. Jesus still knew that his disciples were going to do good things in this world. Part of that, I believe, is this idea of humility. Understanding it's not even, it's not about me, but it is all about Jesus. Could you imagine being Jesus and saying, it's all about me, but it's also not just about me. It's about us together. See, Jesus was humble and loved through his disciples' faults. See, and I believe that Jesus' refusal to complain about his disciples was also a sign of generosity. That he knew that the people around him could not help it. That he knew that the people around him needed to know love. In spite of their thick-headedness, he remained... Uh, so committed to them and served them increasingly even as their failures grew. See, Jesus showed patience. This idea of humility and love to others. Realizing that it is not about ourselves. See, there is something about patience that is finding joy and hope when we do not have control. Because I think that is the opposite of patience. The opposite of patience is realizing that we are not the ones that are in control. And when we don't have that control, we lose our patience. There's a pastor and writer, his name is uh, Adele Bestravos, and I, I love this quote because having patience is not just having patience with others, but it's also having patience with ourselves and with God. And he says this, patience with others is love. Patience with self is hope. Patience with God is faith. 
see again, I believe, that patience, uh, the opposite of patience is, is anxiety. It is anger. It's a lack of control. And when we sense a lack of control, maybe we feel like our world is out of whack. We start to stress and we start to worry. And it, and it takes us to be able to trust that God is the one ultimately in control. Trusting that God is with us, that God has never left us, that God will always be with us. I lo- it was Jim's, uh, Pastor Jim's um, benediction, and it has become mine, this, this idea of that the creator of the heavens and earth knows us and loves us and is holding on to us and will never, ever let us go. That is the truth of the gospel. That we are able to endure. That we are able to have patience. Trusting that God is with us and that he will always be with us. See, we, all, we often want the world to act in a way that we feel comfortable in. But we all know this. The world doesn't work that way. Relationships don't work that way. We don't always get what we want. People don't always act the ways that we'd like them to react. But in patience, we can love because we trust that God is in the midst. When we have patience, we trust that God is there and always will be. That God's love is in the midst of all that we do. So my hope and prayer for all of us, again, as we receive God's love, we recognize our own disobedience to God. We know our own downfalls. What we are able to do is to be love to this world. That is showing patience. That when the person uh, that... Uh, you, you now know this is my pet peeve, uh, that doesn't put the cart away from the grocery store. I know who you are. I don't know who you are. But you know it in your own heart, so you'll have to ask for forgiveness. But we can have uh, patience with those things and the people in our lives that, that rub us the wrong way. We can have patience and love for people that we might not get along with. We can have patience and love for people that we struggle with. We can have patience and love for this world that so desperately needs the hope of Jesus. We can have patience and love for ourselves. Knowing that it's only in the love of Christ that we stand. And it's only in the hope of Christ we stand. Just like the rest of us. We all need Jesus. And we all need his love. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God. We are thankful for you. And the hope that we have in you. God, as we come before you today we ask that your love be upon us and that we are able to be your love to this world. That we can be sowers of seeds of hope and mercy. That we may be patient with one another, with ourselves, and with you. Trusting that you are the creator, you are the sustainer, that you are the one that is with us now and forever. It is in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen.
You may be seated. You're already seated. Would you please pray with me? Oh, Father, how we praise you this morning for who you are. Together, we praise you for the ways that you continue to show us who you are. Lord, praise you that you are the same as you were yesterday as you are today and forever. We praise you that your name is Lord God Almighty. And we honor you for the way that you honor us. We praise you, Father, for keeping us safe, keeping us together. We praise you, Father, for the way that you look after your church here at St. Andrews. We praise you for your word that speaks the truth in all things of life. And Lord, we thank you for the ways, many, many ways that you show us who you are through your word. We thank you for teaching us on this journey of life. Thank you, Lord, that sometimes we take two steps backwards and one step forward. But thank you that you understand that. And thank you that you desire for us to be together in community, to come alongside each other, to love and to pray. Thank you that that's most on your heart. We thank you for your word that you gave us this morning through Pastor Matt and teaching us about patience and what that means. And help us, Lord, because it's really, really hard at times to be patient. And thank you, too, that you understand that. And Father, we lift up all of our burdens to you this morning, and you know every single one of them. Help us to release them to you. Help us to trust that you are using those to show us who you are, as hard as that is at times. And Lord, we have many, many in our, in our community here at St. Andrews who are going through grief, going through health issues, job changes, and all kinds of life stuff, Lord. Please come along that side of those who need it the most, Lord. Help us to care for one another in those situations. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to come and to pray to you, to ask you. And Lord, now, uh, I thank you and praise you, and it's in your name that I ask all these things. And friends, amen. But friends, now I would like to ask you to join me in saying that the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Lord, how we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to give back to you. Lord, would you use these gifts that we have given to you to build your kingdom here in Tucson and beyond. We dedicate these to you, Jesus, and it's in your name we ask all these things. Amen. Friends, the good news of the gospel is that we are known and we have been seen. That God loves us no matter what. That God's love is never going to end for us. So we get to live into that truth and be that truth to this world. If you find yourself in need of prayer for anything, there are folks that would love to pray for you over under the crosses or Stephen ministers under, uh, over by the uh, prayer tower. But as we leave this place... Let us trust that God knows you. The creator of the heavens and earth knows you and loves you beyond anything. And he is holding on to you and will never, ever let you go. Amen.